Hello, my name is Hannah McAndrew. Thank you for joining me on another skin video. Today's video is going to be about B12 deficiency. So I've come in in my spare time, I'm not in my uniform. It's not really anything to do with my job, but it is because it has affected my skin, which is why it's not looking great at the moment. So I thought what a great opportunity for me to tell the world um, how this affects the skin, because maybe other therapists or clients are watching this who maybe are struggling with this deficiency and noticing changes in their skin. Uh, but also I think it's good just for a bit of awareness around the condition because it gives such sinister symptoms and has such a simple treatment, it really is worth knowing about. Now, just a little disclaimer, I'm not a medic, I'm not going to tell you that you've got something or you haven't got something, but obviously I can tell you where to go to get advice and it's it's very, very simply treated, as I said, once you've had the blood work done that's confirmed that you do in fact have the deficiency. So before I start, I'm going to just say a little bit about the vitamin itself. So it's a water-soluble vitamin. It's found usually in meat, fish and dairy. So vegans and vegetarians are prone to getting deficient in it. And it's mainly known as the energy vitamin, you know. So generally speaking, tiredness would be a symptom that you'd see first off if you were deficient in B12. Not only is it used for energy, it is also used for making healthy nerve endings, which is why... When it goes left untreated which mine was because i didn't know what it was for such a long time you then start getting a whole host of neurological symptoms which are very similar to more serious conditions and this is why it's so important to get this blood work done because you could actually have other conditions going on that are nothing to do with b12 that you need urgent treatment for so as i said i'm not a medic please go and see your gp first if you think you have this condition so Lack of B12. Now, some people become deficient even though they eat plenty of meat, fish and dairy because the body can actually struggle to absorb it through the stomach and it can struggle to convert stores from your liver back into the active form in the bloodstream. So obviously, again, if that is you, the only thing that will tell you that is if you go and have tests done uh, with your doctor. Obviously, I, there's no way on earth I could tell you that. And I'm still waiting to hear if that is me and that's why I've become uh, deficient. So symptoms then, let's have a little look at the NHS website. So we'll go through them one at a time. So we've got extreme tiredness. Yes, absolutely. So I was tired for months. If, if I'm being honest, probably years, which I always just put down to stress, working too much, you know, being busy, having a family, etc. However, that tiredness just kept getting worse. I'd have the odd good day. But it got to the point where I was just in bed every weekend. Couldn't get out of bed. I could go to work and that was about it. Um, I was then stuck in bed, almost recovering. Um, and this went on for a few months and that's when I decided I needed to go and get the blood test done. And it came back straight away that I was deficient. So definitely tiredness. Lack of energy, yeah, for sure. So when I was very bad, my legs would almost feel like lead. Like I couldn't even move them to, to stand up or get out of bed. Pins and needles, so this would start off in hands and feet, I would say, first. Um, eventually, if left untreated, maybe you'll feel it elsewhere, like some people say they feel it in the face. For me, it was just hands and feet, um, and when I was very bad, it almost felt like it was spreading up my legs, um, and like stabbing pains then in my thighs as well. Sore and red tongue, so things like mouth ulcers and mouth problems. Now, I didn't get this. Um, but when I look back at video that I took of myself during this, you can see my, my lips are actually quite a bright red colour with no product on. So I must have been having some kind of inflammation in the mouth area. I just hadn't noticed it at that point, I think, because my other symptoms were so bad. It was almost like a sore mouth was just the, the last thing on my mind. So I, I hadn't noticed any changes, but looking back, I probably did have. But certainly things like mouth ulcers and a sore red shiny tongue are definitely a sign of a B12 deficiency. Then we've got muscle weakness. So again, like I said, my legs felt like lead. Some days I would even struggle to lift my own head up off the pillow. It was like very severe malaise almost, like what you get after a virus or after a, a, you know, a, a vaccination, for example. You just feel very, very, very heavy. Um, and like your muscles are very weak and tired. Disturbed vision. So I had an eye test done. Uh, to rule out any problems with my eyes but I would say my vision wasn't disturbed I could still see clearly and I've been told my vision's 2020 since all this which is good but I was certainly banging into things like almost like my peripheral vision spatial awareness wasn't quite there 
Um, and it was almost very difficult to concentrate. So if I was having to look at something really close up for my work and then maybe move, it would just make me feel very woozy, very lightheaded. So I wouldn't say it was a problem with my vision as such, but it was certainly a problem with looking at things and concentrating. Certainly when I was trying to type, you know, I would really struggle to read the words on the screen, even though my vision was correct. It was almost as if it took me longer to process. Um, so whether that's a problem with vision or just a problem with concentration, I don't know. But it certainly felt like my sight was affected and I had to go for a sight test, which thankfully came back normal. Uh, psychological problems may include depression and confusion. So definitely confusion, most definitely. As I said, I was really struggling to, to read things, struggling to write things because I was struggling to read things as well. Um, I'd be very forgetful to the point where I would erase sections of my day. Still can't recall them now. Um, so it wasn't even as if it was forgetful. It was like memory loss almost. I think that was what scared me the most and that was what made me the most confused because... At this point, I knew I was deficient and I was having treatment, but I was still having these symptoms and I was trying to Google everything to try and figure out what it might be. And I just wasn't absorbing the information. And now I'm feeling much better. I've gone back on those websites, read them straight away, realized, oh, yes, this makes total sense. At the time, it was really confusing me, even though I'm normally really switched on and on the ball kind of personality. Depression, I wouldn't say so. It got to the point where I was so sick and tired of being ill, I felt depressed. But I've certainly heard of people having like suicidal thoughts, even even though they don't feel depressed. Um, and that was me. So I still really wanted to do things. It was like my body just really wouldn't let me. I couldn't concentrate long enough to do the things I wanted to do, even sedentary things like reading or painting. That's a hobby of mine. Um, I was really, really struggling with, and that, I think, was what's making me feel um, depressed. But I've certainly had people telling me they've had suicidal thoughts, even though they haven't felt depressed, and that is quite scary. Um, so, obviously, that needs attention straight away if you're feeling that way. Problems with memory, understanding, and judgment. Yeah, absolutely. So, the memory we've talked about, understanding. So, again, I was sometimes reading something and totally taking it the wrong way and bursting into tears because I thought it was bad news reread it half an hour later and realized I totally misread it. Um, judgment, again, the same. I was really struggling to make decisions. I felt like every single, anything that involved thinking, which is everything, isn't it, would take me so much longer. Um, everything was taking me longer, not just physically, because I was physically tired, struggling to hold myself up almost. Um, it was like the, the thought process of doing everything took me so much longer. So as well as the symptoms on the screen here, I also had hair loss, which again, from other people I've been told, is a thing. It wasn't patches, but certainly lots of hair going down the plug hole when washing, brushing it, lots would come out, the hair just appeared thinner. Also, I had problems with my balance, which I've put down to the neurological side of things. So if we think about B12 being needed for healthy nerve endings, if those aren't present, it affects pretty much everything, as we've just seen from the... Um, symptoms list on the NHS website there but to me it was affecting my balance which I've later found out is because obviously because of the neuropathy and the pins and needles in my feet it was almost as if my brain couldn't sense where I was in space similarly with my hands I was almost struggling to pick things up and move them um, without you know almost like my coordination uh, had changed um, so whereas I thought it was sight or perhaps ear problems because of the balance it was actually all just neurological and thankfully, that's all cleared up now. So I had the diagnosis in early September. Um, and I actually had the diagnosis. And at that point, the only symptoms that I had were the hair loss and the tiredness. So none of the neurological things happened. However, the neurological symptoms started very, very quickly and suddenly. Which, again, is why it's so important that you go and get checked if you think you have this underlying... So at the tired stage is when I should have gone. So if you're feeling tired and very lethargic, muscle weakness, go and get those tests done now. Because obviously if this is left untreated and you have the neurological symptoms, they can lead to permanent neurological damage. And some people that I've met up with personally through B12 support groups have even been left wheelchair bound because of this. So it is so important that you go and get this checked before it gets to the stage it got to with me. And I think that's why my recovery took me so much longer as well, because I'd let it go untreated for so long. So I had the diagnosis early September, after having the blood work done mid-August. 
started on B12 tablets, one three times a day, and folic acid, which was both prescribed from the doctors because you need folic acid to help you convert your B12. So if you're taking B12 supplements, you absolutely need folic acid as well. Otherwise, you'll become folic acid deficient. So I started taking the tablets and then I slowly went downhill and started getting all the neurological symptoms. Within the space of a week, less than a week, I went from just being exhausted to being exhausted and having everything on that list there pretty much. Plus, as I said, the balance issues just seemed to be getting worse and worse and worse. Um, the memory loss, the confusion was getting worse and worse and worse. I was also having, um, which is like end stage symptoms of this deficiency, like palpitations, breathlessness, muscle twitching. So not just like my eye twitching when, you know, you run down, you get that eye twitch. It was all over my body, muscle twitching, spasms. Um, I even went through stages where my, my coordination wasn't there at all. Like I couldn't even put my own shoes on. It was very scary, very, very scary. Now, thankfully, I had injections locally with a nurse. So a lot of nurses who can prescribe, who offer treatments like Botox, for example, will also prescribe B12. So I was lucky enough that I could afford to do that. I had the course without having to bother my GP because we all know how difficult it can be to see a GP nowadays. And I started feeling much better within the first few hours of having the first jab. Now, the important thing to note is if you're going to a, you know, a prescribe, uh, a nurse who's able to prescribe, sorry, great. Make sure that you have the course that the NHS would give you, which is basically six jabs over the space of a fortnight. If you're having neurological symptoms, that needs to be every other day until no further improvement. So thankfully, I was in a position that I could pay for this myself. Um, because I know some GPs are very reluctant to do it in primary care if you're having neurological symptoms, so it's really important that you you fight <laughs> to get what you're entitled to. However, I will say that because my judgment was so impaired and I was so lacking in energy at this stage, I just didn't even have the cognitive function to do that. So it was just easier for, easier for me to just say to the nurse, just inject me every two days until I feel better. And in fairness, I did. The neurological symptoms went first. Um, so I would say it took a good sort of two and a half months of injections to get to the point where I've got absolutely now no neurological symptoms whatsoever. However, I am still struggling with the tiredness. As you can see, the dark circles under my eyes here. Uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that with more injections, and, I, and I'm, I'm having them further spaced apart now, so I'm almost kind of weaning myself off at this stage. If you think that you need the, inj or you know you need the injections because you've had the blood work done, um, and your GP is reluctant to give you more. Um, there are places you can get them from privately at a lower cost. Um, so please email me if you feel like that is you. Um, I've got nurses who do almost like pay what you can afford schemes that I've managed to get in contact with via B12 support groups, etc. And also locally. So definitely if you're in South Wales, I can definitely help you with that. But if not, please just send me an email. And I'll send you the link to the support groups on Facebook if you do feel like you need more jabs. But as I said, it's very important to get the blood work done first because if you have got something else going on, the B12 isn't necessarily going to help you. And certainly once you've started B12 treatment, you can't just abruptly stop if you're having neurological symptoms because I abruptly stopped after I had the initial course that I would have had on the NHS and I went straight downhill over the space of about a week back to square one again. So I definitely needed more. Uh, I'm feeling much better now. As I said, it's just the tiredness. Now, in terms of skin, um, I've always suffered with periorbital pigmentation. I'll put a photo up here of my eyes without makeup. And this is from a few years back. Very brown, almost tea bag coloured. Now, this alone wouldn't say you're B12 deficient, but the more I'm reading around, I've seen this in other clients and it's turned out they've also had a deficiency. So I'm not saying this is, you know, alone is enough to say it could just be a little indicator. The reason that I know mine is B12 linked is because since having all of the injections, it seems to be actually improving for the first time in my whole in the whole of my adult life. I know it will never fully get back to normal because it's not just due to that. My dark circles are also due to loss of volume under the eye, having a thin skin there, so shadowing, and also actual pigmentation. So mine go darker in the sun. Um, so I'll never fully get rid of this, I know, just by having B12 shots. And I'm certainly not suggesting that if you have this, that a, treat a treatment for around your eyes would be B12 shots. Always get your blood work done first. Um, but it certainly can be an indicator as to if, if you if you perhaps have an underlying B12 condition and don't know about it. Because I've had this around my eyes for years and I've also felt tired for years. 
The other thing that happened with the injections, 10% of people who have these hydroxocobalamin injections will get acne. <laughs> now, obviously, I'm very acne prone anyways. I had it for years before I went on to NIMU skincare about four or five years ago. And actually, prior to being diagnosed, my acne was fully cleared up. So obviously, a lack of B12 could mean that you, know, you don't get acne. Put B12 into your system, you'll get acne. I don't know if that's exactly how it works, but certainly I was one of the 10% of people that got this traditional nose-to-mouth acne. And I'll pop a picture of that up there for you to see. Um, so unfortunately, that is just something that I've got to put up with until I can manage to wean myself off these injections. Um, but I will say that a lot of people, it, it will stabilise. So you might get it after the first few jabs or after the second jab sometimes. I didn't get it until about maybe four jabs in. Um, and then it, it does kind of subside. Like, you know, it's much better than it was, um, but it's just something I'm just going to have to put up with. I would rather have this than the symptoms I was getting before. Now, as you can see from my skin today, I'm still not particularly great with my skin because obviously if you know, you're ill anyway, you know, you're deficient in anything, your skin isn't going to function at its optimal level. So I've been doing treatments such as LED light, um, which is very, very soothing and doesn't involve any kind of active ingredients just to try and help my skin through this process. But obviously, if you need advice specific uh, for you, then again, you can book a consultation on my website, www.hannamacandrew.com. If you have any questions about sourcing B12 support groups, please email me. I'll send you a load of links. But I will definitely post the links below to have a private active B12 blood test in the post because that can actually be slightly more accurate than the one you can get from your GP. And it's worth having those results uh, to hand if you do want to go to your GP later and ask for more injections. And also, um, I will post a link to a nurse locally to me in South Wales who is a prescriber who can prescribe the injections if you are based um, near to me, which is actually in Porthcourt, South Wales. So I hope you found this video uh, useful. There may be a part two and a part three to come, you know, documenting my recovery. Um, but it does take quite a few months. So please persevere if you've recently been diagnosed. And obviously, if you feel like you're getting worse, go back to doctor because their symptoms are so, so similar to other neurological conditions like, um, I don't want to scare anybody, but things like MS, uh, Parkinson's, um, you know, problems with balance with the ears, for example. So it, you do need to absolutely rule out everything else and have your bloods done. Thank you very much for joining me today and I hope to see you on another video again soon.